Excited to have you guys. Kate Thank Bosworth and Hayden me. Christensen are with us. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks We're for having us. We have a special couch for you this morning. Yeah. <laughs> it's a comfy couch. Get comfortable. I like it. You can uh, man spread. Man spread. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll stay as I am. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, as long as it, as long putting as it as up as there. As long as it doesn't get a butt hurt, we'll be okay. <laughs> um, there was a best selling book called 90 Minutes in Heaven, which has been on the best selling list for I don't know how many years, 15 years or something like that. They've made a movie out of it, and mm -hmm. uh, it's about Don Piper, who in 1989 died in a car crash and was dead for an hour and a half and then came back to life. I died. When I woke up, I was in heaven. I'd like to pray for him. He's alive! I'm so scared. God, please help us. It's going to be tough, but I need you now. I fought all I can. I'm ready to die. You got all these people who care so much for you, and you have no idea how much they love you. We're gonna pray all night for you. We're taking over from here. So wow, good. okay. <laughs> so good. I know, I was just yeah. holding his hand going, that was so intense. Every moment was so intense. And uh, it looks though, that way. Yeah, and every time it felt that way for us, I would look over it the real Eva and Don and think, you know, what, for what they actually went through. Were they, were they around? there? Yeah. yeah, they were. Don wow. was there almost every day. Yeah, he was around quite a bit, um, very involved in the project and uh, was a real treat and pleasure and uh, made our jobs a little bit easier yeah. having, you know, uh, the real people around. It sort of gave us that mirror to hold up to say, hey, are, you know, are we getting this right? Yeah. But sometimes Aiden it cuts another way, right? Yeah. It can. Yeah. Um, he. He was just our, you know, our, our beacon, you know, our kind of guidepost and incredibly generous and kind and supportive. And he would often look, look at us and say, that's how it was. Uh, really? You know, yeah. Oh, wow. So he's on a bridge. Where was this now? He's driving on a bridge. Uh, in, in Texas. In Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Texas. I think on his way to Bible study. He's a pastor. Yeah. Baptist. Smashes into a truck and he's dead. Yes. Yeah, pronounced dead on the scene. Uh, uh, for 90 minutes, uh, uh, and a, uh, a a fellow uh, church member actually crawled into the crawl into the car with him and started praying for him. Uh, and uh, through these prayers, he he came back to life. Well, he says he's alive, yeah, and you yeah, see yeah. those troopers on the road, just you know, in shock. Yeah. And he looks up to the sky, and you're just so moved by that powerful moment. Yeah. But then, what's interesting about the film is you think, okay, he's alive. This is all good. But in a way, he perhaps wishes he hadn't come back to life. Part of the movie talks about, you know, the joy and the great feelings he felt when he was up in heaven for the 90 minutes or whatever, you know, whatever that was. And coming back to life, he's in excruciating pain. He's suffering. And that's where you come in, your yeah. character, right? Oh, he, I mean, Don often talks about how glorious it was in heaven and that he didn't, when he came back to, to his life on earth, he didn't want to be here. You know, nothing mattered. He just wanted to be back there. Mm -hmm. And even still, when you speak to him today, it's such an amazing experience because he's seen something most of us haven't seen. Well, and he sees, I remember in the book, he sees his great-grandparents. Yes. Mm -hmm. He smells the greatest aroma in, yeah. in the world. It, the scene is more beautiful than anything he's ever seen. Mm -hmm. Why does he want it here? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, and he, he came back to what he describes as his new normal, which is you know, a very um, badly damaged body, you know, a lot of rehabilitation, um, you know, and, and his wife, Eva, who is just this incredible woman, uh, had to take over the family and a lot of the responsibilities that she wasn't used to taking over. Mm -hmm. So she became the backbone in a lot is of ways. Is it true you're sleeping with the director? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, is that I, how you got this part? <laughs> is that how you got this part? <laughs> we, um, <clears throat> I, I married to the director, <laughs> Michael Polish, um, and we met on a movie called Big Sur. Big Sur, which is yeah. good, oh, the Jack that Kerouac I movie. Well. Exactly. Uh, your husband and his twin brother, the yes. famous Polish brothers. Yes. They tend to make very quirky movies, mm -hmm. different movies. Not. Yeah. This almost seems mainstream mm -hmm. for a Polish movie. Yeah, he, you know, I think what Michael really enjoys about being a director is the idea of a career. And, you know, I know he talks a lot about um, seeing everything from 
from Spielberg to Scorsese to all the different kind of movies he loved and he thought you know I should be able to explore all these different types of genres as a director and stretch myself as well you know for all the films that he's been a fan of and um, I think he was just very compelled by this story and the idea of um, you know being able to be a part of something that inspires so many people you know I think often as artists we take on projects that are a little bit selfish you know mm -hmm. we think oh, I want to explore this character sure. or I want to you know I want to be a part of something maybe a little bit more you know independent or, or quirky right. and this is the type of project that I think can speak to so many people and and also so many there's people. a question about uh, this movie there are a lot of <laughs> faith-based movies lately that have come out and have done they've been very successful they've been successful somewhat mainstream but a special audience for these movies this movie apparently is not aimed just at that audience Am I correct? I hope so, yeah. I think, I think that there is a, a, a broader story that should appeal to a broader audience. I mean... Um, well, it's about family and yeah. hope. Absolutely, and, just, and community you know, and love. Not giving up and, yeah. Uh, a lot of very good, powerful themes at work uh, beyond just the sort of the obvious, you know, uh, curiosity about heaven. Um, this ain't Star Wars. It ain't Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a little different. Very far removed. It's a little yeah. different. I think world. it's it definitely has, I think, a universal appeal of, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that uh, need hope, you know, and mm -hmm. you know we all sure. go through yes. very difficult times. Obviously, there's a lot of, uh, you know, real disturbances we've seen even as as recently as yesterday, yes. and there yes. are people going through really hard times. And I think this is a very timely movie. All right, uh, 90 Minutes in Heaven opens nationwide on September 11th. It's great to have you guys here. Thank, thank you. you. Can't wait to the pleasure. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you, you so guys, much. when you see Happy the trip. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs>